What's up guys? My name is Kevin. You're watching Track Carb Session. Today's going to be another quick episode. I just want to show you the difference between uh, the front wheel drive application and rear wheel drive application for the LFX V6 V6. Uh, in case you're doing this swap into any vehicle, not just an RX-8. So if you watched my previous video uh, showing you that we got a motor, you'll know that we ended up getting an engine from a Cadillac SRX, uh, which is a front wheel drive SUV. Um, and so what we need to do, the kit that I'm using to swap into the RX-8 um, is designed for the rear wheel drive motor. So one that you would find in uh, a Camaro or a Cadillac, um, I think it's in a CTS as well as in the, uh, maybe a couple of the ATS or the ATS Vs. Um, <clears throat> in America and then in places like Australia I think um, Holden has a couple vehicles that have uh, this engine as well um, but it was pretty hard for me to find the Camaro engine um, or Cadillac engine so I ended up getting one of these out of um, like I said an SRX so it's front wheel drive so I'm just going to show you the things that I need to do to make it a rear wheel drive uh, motor so that we can put it in this car and if you are if you're doing the same thing with an RX-8 or if you're doing something with another vehicle uh, you may need to do some of these part swaps now if you're just gonna make a custom swap into something um, you can absolutely keep these front wheel drive components it's not going to keep you from bolting up uh, you know a rear wheel drive transmission to this engine that'll still work fine um, You'll need to reroute some of the cooling hoses, um, but that's going to all be custom in an engine swap anyway. Um, but you do need to know that there are horsepower differences. Uh, basically, this intake manifold and uh, I believe the exhaust, because the exhaust is a little more choked in a front wheel drive application, um, and then possibly some tuning. Usually the front wheel drive engines have less power. Now the engine itself is exactly the same. So if you swap over the intake manifold, put on a good exhaust obviously, um, and then have some kind of tune or use a Camaro ECU, um, then you should be able to make the same kind of power uh, that a Camaro makes from the factory. So um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go over the pieces that came on this motor and the pieces that you need to make it rear wheel drive. And I'll put all the parts, um, the part numbers, and then links to where I found them for the best price currently. Um, I'll put that all in the description. So if you're doing a swap, hopefully you can just click on those and they're still the best prices, but uh, definitely hunt around to keep the, the price of your swap down. Uh, but let's get to it. Okay, so the first major difference is the intake manifold. Uh, this intake manifold, you can see, the throttle body is offset to the left side. Uh, the Camaro intake manifold, which I'll show you in a second, um, actually has the throttle body right here in the middle and it brings it down a little bit lower. Now in order to put the Camaro throttle body and uh, intake manifold on here, you actually have to replace this water outlet in the front uh, because the throttle body on the Camaro one will get in the way. So there's a new um, water outlet that bolts in right here and brings the water outlet down a little bit lower to right here. The other thing that you're going to find when you get the engine is this piece right here. It's like a um, support bridge or uh, part of the engine mount system. I think it actually sits on here like this. Um, but you'll just pull that off. You don't need that in uh, the rear wheel drive set up so you've got the intake manifold the water outlet and then the um, alternator was actually right here um, and so that gets pulled off um, again if you're doing this in a custom swap um, you don't have to move the alternator from over there uh, but the kit that I'm using that you'll see uh, in a couple weeks for the RX-8 once we put the engine in, it actually uses uh, the Camaro setup. And so what you do is get a bracket that comes down over here, which in front wheel drive, uh, your power steering pump is here. 
Uh, but of course with the RX-8, we're gonna be using electric power steering, so we don't need the power steering pump. But uh, there's a bracket that bolts on here, and then your alternator actually bolts on over here. Um, your next difference is gonna be in the back. Let's see. So in the back, you actually have a few things that are gonna be changed. So you have your thermostat housing here, and the reason for that, at least in our application, is trying to get this engine right up against the firewall. This sticks out too far, and then uh, the hoses that come off of it, the coolant hoses, actually go straight towards the firewall. So the Camaro one uh, takes care of that. And then the final piece that you have in the back, it's hard to see, uh, but it's gonna be this, um, this fuel feed line that actually comes in before your high pressure pump. And so it comes off back here and, uh, and the kit that we're using actually has the fuel set up for, um, for a Camaro engine and the input for the fuel rail is actually um, in a different spot. So let me go ahead and, uh, and show you what the engine looks like with the new pieces. All right, one other thing really quick before we swap these parts, I forgot to show you one other piece. Uh, and the reason I forgot is because I'm actually not gonna use uh, the Camaro piece. But once you swap this intake manifold, this uh, PCV piece for the um, breather on your valve cover, this is different because it's in a different spot on your intake manifold because it's a different intake manifold. Um, I'm not gonna use that because, especially on a direct injection engine, uh, I prefer using a oil catch can. And so uh, it's gonna allow us to um, prevent as much oil buildup on the intake valves as possible you don't have um, any fuel that's going to be hitting uh, the top of the intake valves or any of the intake runners and in the cylinder heads or the uh, the intake manifold and so when you get carbon buildup in there even if you try to use um, some kind of fuel cleaner or anything like that it gets injected directly into your cylinders and not into uh, you know the ports so you're not going to be able to clean those so in order to clean your intake valves on these direct injection motors you actually got to pull the intake manifold off and and you know soak them down with sea foam or some kind of uh, cleaner and then blow all that out or vacuum it out um, to remove all that carbon so we're going to tr try to prevent as much of that as we can and uh, so what i'm going to do is just cut it here and use this piece that actually goes into the manifold because it has the same flange and then over here on the uh, on the valve cover we're going to cut it right here I'm just going to run hose over to the um, firewall or on the fender well. I'm not sure where yet. We'll find a place for it once we get the engine in. Uh, but we're going to throw an oil catch can in there and uh, and just use these two connectors and run um, run hose. So if you don't want to do that, if you just want to use a factory piece, uh, the Camaro piece of this is like uh, it's like nine dollars and fifty cents in the U.S. So um, I'll put a link in this description for this as well. Uh, but we're not going to be using that on mine. All right. So there's your intake manifold. I think this looks a whole lot better than uh, the front wheel drive intake manifold, but that may just be my preference. Um, there's your alternator bracket bolts on, and then you've got three bolts that hold uh, the alternator on. I've got to get a couple more bolts. Uh, to hold this bracket on because obviously I didn't have the bracket before so I'm going to need some bolts to hold it on. Um, here's your new uh, thermostat housing and all your water outlets are on this side so it runs it right down the side of the motor there so you can push this right up against the firewall um, and then the new fuel line which puts it out this direction. Like I said I mean if you're doing a custom swap into a different car um, or even into an RX-8, you don't, you don't necessarily have to replace this fuel line. Um, I would recommend it just because of the same thing with the water outlet here. Um, the factory one on this front wheel drive was pointing straight towards the firewall, so it may cause uh, plumbing issues for you there. 
Um, but if you wanted to save some money, uh, this piece is about a hundred bucks. So, um, you know, if you didn't want to spend that and you got a front wheel drive engine, uh, you could certainly make the other one work. But uh, this will allow me to bolt it right in with the kit that we're getting that comes with the fuel system. So, um, but basically that's it. I mean, the other things that you're going to have to swap over is your, uh, your map sensor here. Um, it's the same one that was in the other manifold, just swaps right over. And then, uh, and then this, some kind of, um, some kind of valve probably has to do with emissions. Um, but there is an open hole here. Uh, so you do want to swap this over. Um, not sure about the programming on the ECU that we're going to be running, uh, whether or not we're going to be using any of this, uh, but it's most likely for um, exhaust gas recirculation, but I haven't looked into it. Um, then we've got our throttle body. It swapped right over, um, and, uh, and I mounted it upside down. I think this is how it goes. So uh, the motor and everything is lower down, and then our water outlet right here now one other thing i did want to point out i forgot to mention this before another difference between the front wheel drive and the rear wheel drive um, applications is right here um, with the rear wheel drive cars you have um, the oil filter adapter and it actually is a, a canister type oil filter um, and it's definitely in the way on this particular swap um, the front wheel drive actually came with a different oil filter mount uh, or an oil filter adapter and uh, it uses your your normal uh, spin on filter so it's possible it could be used uh, the kit that um, I'm using comes with a custom billet one um, and then I'm going to be running an oil cooler to it so I'm not going to be using it but it's possible that you could use uh, the front wheel drive oil adapter here that has uh, the spin on it actually brings it up to like right around here um, so depending on how much room you have width wise in your uh, engine bay you may or may not be able to use that so uh, that was the other thing I wanted to point out other than that everything's basically the same and so now that we've got all this swapped we should have basically the same power um, as uh, what you would see in a Camaro so um, you know let me know if you have any questions like I said I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these pieces that I've had to buy in the description below and you can make the decision whether or not it makes sense for you to go ahead and purchase a uh, front-wheel drive engine save some money but you'd have to you know buy all these parts and in the end you may or may not I ended up probably spending more um, like I said I bought a brand new intake manifold and the rest of these parts are brand new GM parts so I may have spent a little bit more than what you could if you found them on the used market but um, but still between the parts cost and then the engine cost um, it it probably cost me more uh, than just finding a Camaro one uh, one of the issues with that for me though was finding a good low mileage Camaro um, that was that was pretty local and I was having trouble there so I went ahead and did this it wasn't exactly for cost reasons uh, but there you go you have an idea of whether whether or not you want to go with a rear-wheel drive engine or front-wheel drive engine those are the only differences and uh, now you know what you need to do if you end up with a front-wheel drive one thank you so much for watching uh, please leave any comments or questions that you have and uh, I'll see you in the next video.